Nobody believes me. Not even you. I want to, Billy. But why won't you tell me where you were that night? Because I can't. I, I don't remember. Oh, Billy. Do you remember that I love you? I don't think I could ever forget that. Jane, I'm sorry. Billy is due in court. We have to go. Mark, when we come back, stick to the pages as written, okay? You got it, Milt. <sighs> Eddie? Eddie? Eddie, thanks. Thanks, great. You know, Chris, I, I was just trying to play the moment. Oh. You really ought to try working with me, huh? That is work I don't need. Evan, the last time this happened, you said that you would talk to him about it. Mark, please, no more clinches unless they're in the script. You got it, boss. Thanks. Uh, there's something else you and I need to discuss after lunch. Just keep him away from me, all right? Chris, darling, Alex and I both want you to know that we think it's just dreadful the way that young man is treating you. Sweetheart, it is, it is so unprofessional. I remember once when I was doing Alex, a play. Alex, please. Sorry. Anyway, if you do decide to take him to the Guild on this, we will certainly support you. Thanks, Sandra. You're welcome. You too, Alex. Oh, my God, oh, my God, you're Chris Buckner. You're even more beautiful in person. Janie Stockwell is my favorite pair. Thank you. Oh, very nice. Uh, could I have your, uh, your uh, autograph? Autograph. Sure. Your autograph. What's your name? Um, it's uh, Peg. P-E-G. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Buckner. Is she disturbing you? No, not at all. She's fine. Oh, thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. It was really nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Take She's care. So nice. Ma'am, I'm afraid if you don't have a pass, you're going to have to leave. But, but did you see who that was? That was yeah, Chris Buckner. She I just know, gave me I know, but like I told you before, there are no studio tours, oh, no but... tickets to the show, and please... No more well, autographs. Wait a minute. I'm My cousin went to Chicago last summer and she got tickets to Oprah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't do that here. But I came all the way through. I know, and I'm sorry. Look, you're going to have to go. told me that you and Miss Grant had to switch dressing rooms. He didn't tell you? Not yet. Wait a minute. Put this back. Put it back in there. Oh, Chris, great. It's beautiful. Everyone, uh... Uh, this morning, I asked a very special lady to share life with me. And I know you're all going to be as happy as I am that she's agreed. Ladies and gentlemen, the future Mrs. Mark Stratton, the very, very lovely Charlotte Grant. How wonderful. How wonderful. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, Evan. Thank you. Mimi says Charlotte's getting my dressing room. I was going to tell you. Um, Chris, it, it really only makes sense. Uh, after all, Charlotte's going to be working a lot more, and she's going to need a bigger dressing room. And I'm not? We decided to make a few changes in the storyline. So the rumors are true? Yeah, starting with tomorrow's script. Mark is giving you ideas for the uh, show. Wait a second, wait a second. Chris, this is an entire new storyline just for you. Go on, I can't wait. Okay, okay. Now, we have a fight in prison. 
And you go on a ski trip up to Aspen to forget. But there's an avalanche. Uh, am I frozen indefinitely? No, no, it's even better. By the time the rescue team finds you, you're brain dead. Flatline, the doctors have to put you on complete life support. And Chris, the women, they're going to cry their eyes out worrying when you're going to recover. And when is that? We'll milk it as long as we can. Six months minimum. Right. We can get Entertainment Weekly to keep tabs on it. Chris Buckner in a coma. Week 52. That's but great. I'm the love interest. Uh, well, Chris, after your tragic accident, my attorney comes to console me, and, and in the midst of all my grief and all my sorrow, we, we fall in love. Well, it'll be great for the show, Chris. For all of us. I want out. Uh, Evan, if Chris lands on another show that could really drain our audience, I think it would definitely be best if Chris stayed right where she is. You're under contract. Why are you listening to him? Since when does he rate special treatment? Since the network got the latest demographics report, Chris. Park has sensational numbers with the advertiser's prime audience group. Chris, I told you, you really ought to try working with me. You rat. Ow! Ow! I could kill you for this. Well, Evan, any other new storylines coming up that we should know about? My dressing room this afternoon. My old dressing room. Yeah. I heard about what happened. It's a rotten break. Yeah. Well, one day you're riding high, and the next day, it's all over. <laughs> Mark will get his mort. Just wait. Yeah, I'm sure he will. Have a good night. Thanks. Visions, pages 12 and 13, Sandra. Gee, Evan, why don't you wait until the last minute? We're only supposed to shoot this in a half an hour. Our network notes, they just came in last night. Anything new for me in this, Evan? Here's the 20 line speech on page 8. What? Oh my God! I'm kidding, Alex. For God's sake. Revisions? Gee, I hope they don't affect my interpretation. Jane lies stiff as a board. Nothing I like better than a creative challenge. Where's Charlotte? I don't know, Evan. Probably checking out her new dressing room. It's so hard to see her like this, Henry. I know. It's as if she's trapped in her own mind and nobody can reach her. Our very own sleeping beauty. Our baby. Don, darling, the doctors are doing everything that they can. I know. You've got to be strong for her sake. <sighs> oh. Damn it, Mimi, cut! Cut! Ah. Mark, could you save the yelling till after we stop the tape? Milt, she burned me! I'm sorry. Milt, I won't have to do my line over again, will I? No, Alex, we'll fix it in post. Thank you. <sighs> Let's set up for the jailhouse scene. Mark and Charlotte, that's you. Charlotte? Where is Charlotte? Right here, Mel. Okay. Let's block it out. I 
lying there in the snow. I, sh I should never have let her go off angry like that, Ellen. Don't blame yourself. No. Well, who else can I blame? Oh, I, I have to go. I'm doing court. I'll see you at the arraignment tomorrow. I'm going to forget what we just said. I'll never forget. I love you. Cut. Mark, cut. Give the woman some air. <laughs> what? What's the problem? I thought we agreed yesterday you were going to stick to the pages as written. So, so. I... Mark, you all right? What's wrong? What's happening, Mark? I can't breathe. I can't breathe, Evan. He's having an attack. Come on, just take it easy. Relax. It is an allergy kit. Mimi. Dining room table. It's still in the pharmacy bed. Come on, it's okay. Mark, come on. We all know what to do. This has happened before. Just keep calm. My God, shouldn't we call a doctor? Alex, please, don't get a star call. Honey, Mark? you're gonna be just fine. You're gonna be fine. Lester Live for Entertainment Weekly. It has been two days since the unexpected death of Mark Stratton on the set of Mile High. And at this point, there's still no official word from the medical examiner's office. Perry Mason, come on, come on. Mr. Mason, Mr. Mason, Mr. Mason. Mr. Mason. Mr. Mason. Mr. Mason. Jack Lester, uh, is there any truth to the rumor the police are investigating Mark Stratton's death as a homicide? Oh, I'm just here to see a friend. Oh, excuse me, just a minute. Perry. Thank goodness you came. What's going on, Chris? It's crazy. This police detective says Mark might have been murdered. Oh, no, not might have been, Miss Buckner. The medical examiner is absolutely certain it was murder. Hello, Mr. Mason. Lieutenant? I'd better talk to Lieutenant Brock for a moment. Miss Buckner mentioned she used to be your ward. Her father was a judge. Her mother was my law clerk before she became a lawyer. They both died in a car accident. Now, is Chris in trouble? Oh, I'd, I'd say so. According to the news last night, Mark Stratton died from some kind of allergic reaction. Anaphylactic shock leading to total cardiac arrest. What was it? Antibiotics? Bee stings? Walnut oil. Walnut oil? <laughs> that would be uncommon. Uncommon, right. You know, Mr. Mason, most mornings I get up, I pretty much know what I'm going to do through the day. I mean, people knife each other, they shoot each other, they push each other off buildings. I mean, people simply are not nice to each other. But I'm a homicide detective, and that's what I'm supposed to be used to. But until this morning, I've never once seen or heard of anyone killing another person with walnut oil most people that allergic take precautions and most people that allergic keep a special allergy kit on hand with an injector of epinephrine just in case they go into shock like he did eric let me see that thing for a minute please now, i want to show you what set this guy off mr mason lipstick lipstick with walnut oil charlotte grant was wearing it and when she kissed him during one of the scenes they were taping, he had a predictable reaction, a shortness of breath, a rapid pulse, the first stages leading to anaphylactic shock. Couldn't have been enough oil in that lipstick to bring on all that or to kill him. No, not in the lipstick, Mr. Mason, but 
in the injector he used to treat himself, the injector that was supposed to contain the epinephrine, somebody spiked it. That was loaded with walnut oil. I'm talking about the same kind of walnut oil that you pick up in any cooking store. That would certainly do it. See? And in this case, Stratton went to put out the fire, and he burned down the barn. How's Chris involved? Oh, Chris. I'm about to arrest her for murder. On what grounds? On the grounds she had reason to want Stratton dead. She threatened him, and she said, and I quote, right here, sir, I could kill you for this. Well? Well, there's more, sir. We found this kit in her dressing room, and it has Stratton's fingerprints all over it. Leading to what conclusion? Leading me to the conclusion that she took that kit out of Stratton's dressing room and replaced it with the one that killed him. How do you know someone else didn't tamper with the allergy kits? Because the security guard out there said that she was the only one that returned to the studio that night. What about the cast and crew who arrived in the morning? Mr. Mason, you see that makeup table? located right across from Stratton's dressing room. Anyone going in there would have been clearly seen, sir. I think I got it with this, Miss Mason. You can't believe that. Perry, it isn't true. <laughs> Tenant. Della said I'd hardly recognize you. It hasn't been that long. Two years of no communication. I know. I was afraid you'd try to talk me out of pursuing my career. The last time I saw you, you were still a very young lady. Not anymore. You thought I was wrong to quit college. I thought you were wrong to shortchange yourself. Because I wanted to be an actress? No, your career has always been up to you. But you didn't approve. Your parents would have wanted you to finish school. I tried to follow their wishes and to understand yours. Look where my wishes got me. I didn't know who else to turn to. I didn't know what to do. Lieutenant. Uh, does the young lady care to make a statement? Is the young lady under arrest? Oh. Miss Buckner, I am placing you under arrest for the murder of Mark Stratton. Miss Buckner is my client. She knows her rights and has nothing to say at this time. Your Honor, the defendant has no family in this community and no professional ties to keep her here. This murder is not a crime of passion. It is an extremely calculated and devious crime and suggests that the person who committed it... Your Honor, my distinguished colleague forgets that this is a bail hearing, not a trial. Mr. Mason is, as always, perfectly correct, Your Honor. The reason I emphasize the nature of this crime is that it reflects on the likelihood that the defendant will flee the area. State requests bail in the amount of $1 million. If it please the court, Miss Buckner is highly regarded in her profession, has very strong ties to this community. The amount of bail is unjustified. Bail is set at $100,000. It's very late. We will recess until tomorrow morning. Hello, Mason. I'm surprised you didn't call it murder most foul. I'm saving that one for court. My wife is a great fan of you. If you hurry, you can make the six o'clock news. Then I'll hurry. Uh, Miss Buckner? Not now, please. How's Chris? Oh, she's fine. We checked her into the Park Lane Hotel. Chris threatened Mark Stratton in front of five people the day before the murder. Evan King, the producer, Mimi Hoyle, a production assistant, Charlotte Grant, Stratton's fiance, Sandra Drake, and Alex Straub. Who were the last two? Well, Sandra Drake plays Aunt Margaret on Mile High, Barry. 
Alex Straub is Judge Henry, and Charlotte Grant is an attorney. Oh, and, and Mark Stratton played Billy Clavin, and Chris was Janie Stockwell. They were lovers. Only she's in a coma, and he has amnesia, and he's on trial for a murder he didn't even commit. Della, you're a soap fan? Well, Justice Thurgood Marshall was a soap fan, Ken. He used to watch his soaps in chambers between sessions of the Supreme Court. Della, find out from Chris about the people who heard her threats to Mark Stratton. Right. Ken, get permission to search his house. Brock and his people have already been through the place. That makes it easy for you. When I'm through here, I'll talk with Mort Aberdeen. Who's that? The security guard that placed Chris at the studio the night before Stratton's murder. I'll tell him he should have had a career in soap opera. And nobody, Mr. Mason. Nobody went in or out that night except Chris Buckner. Do you keep a log? Yeah, the DA's got it, but I can tell you what it says. That might help. Well, the studio closes at 7 o'clock. Uh, everyone's out by 7.15. I was working the night shift, so that's when I came on. I did my rounds, and Miss Buckner got here uh, a little after 8, and she left 20, 30 minutes later. About 8.30 or so. And that's it. Could someone have possibly entered the studio without your knowledge? Oh, no, look. We've got four gates. After hours, three of them are locked with uh, electronic alarms wired to a central office, and the fourth gate, the main gate, has a 24-hour guard. That night it was me. Who keeps the keys to the other gates? Well, uh, there's two sets of master keys. One's at a safe in the security office, and uh, the other's at the main gate. And you can't make dupes. I assume the clock you use to keep your log is accurate. Oh, yeah. I use the main time clock. Uh, I set my watch by it. Where would I find the production assistant, Mimi Hoyle? Well, um, she's probably on the set. They're taping next week's shows. Thank you for your help, Mr. Aberdeen. Now, Mr. Mason, no matter what they say, uh, I think Chris is a good kid. So do I, sir. So do I. I just can't look at him like this, Henry. Almost like he's in some kind of dark dream. I know. It's as if she's trapped in her own this mind. This is the and nobody background information you wanted. Our very own. That's Sandra Drake and Alex Straub. Don't, uh, the doctors are doing everything that they can. I know. The guards say that if Billy hadn't gone back into the burning cell block to rescue the warden, he might have escaped with his friends. What do you think's going to happen to him now? He's going to get a fair trial, this boy. Even if it means going back on the bench and handling the case myself. That's a promise, son. Cut. Save it. It's a good one. Good. Yes. He has a mustache. That man doesn't look anything like Mark Stratton. So? So, isn't he supposed to play Mark Stratton's character? Yeah, what happens to the play when he takes the bandages off? Miraculous. They say it was plastic surgery. <sighs> Happens all the time. Who are you? Uh, uh, Della Street. I work for Perry Mason. Come, I'll introduce you. Who's Perry Mason? I'm a lawyer. I represent Chris Buckner. Uh, Perry, this is Mimi Hoyle. May we have a word? Excuse me. I'll just watch over here. Places, everybody. We're going to make one. You told the police Stratton had a new kit delivered the day before the murder. That's right. It came at the end of the day. Which means the switch could only have been made sometime that night or the next morning. What uh, happened to his old kid? I don't know. I think Mark said he lost it. 
Look, I have a production meeting in five minutes. How uh, long have you been with Mile High, Miss Hoyle? Three years. People who work together on TV shows often become like families, don't they? Sometimes. And, as in any family, it can be hard to keep secrets. I guess. Miss Hoyle, I want to ask you something very personal. I wouldn't ask if Chris Buckner's life weren't at risk. Okay, so ask. Did you have an abortion several months ago and did Mark Stratton pay for it? All right. How long were the two of you lovers? For about two months when he first started the show. I thought it was true love. <laughs> Guess I've been working on these soaps too long. Was the abortion his idea? He said the timing wasn't very good. He said that there would be plenty of opportunities to have children when his career got going. He said a lot of things, and then he dumped me. He also said that if I gave him any grief, he'd have me fired. I suppose when you heard he was going to marry Charlotte Grant, it made you pretty upset, angry even. What do you think? Hmm. Angry enough to kill him? Yeah. But I didn't do it. Anyway, I couldn't possibly have switched those allergy kits. I wasn't anywhere near here that night. Where were you? The Appaloosa. It's a country western bar on Fairmont. I'm there every Monday night. You can ask anyone. I don't care. Ask everyone. I intend to. This is Ken calling in at 11. Della, you can tell Perry I finally got the keys for Stratton's house from Lieutenant Brock. All right, I'll check in after I'm done here. doing here? Hey, the police. I didn't mean to do anything wrong. I just wanted to see where he lived. Billy Clay lived. I mean, Mark Stratton. Well, slow down. And then I came up the driveway, and then the gate was open, so I came inside, and I heard this noise inside, and then you came along and scared me up to death. What noise inside? Wait here. Okay. I can't. I still have ten days left on my vacation. 
Hi, I'm Peg. Peg Furman. Ken Lance. <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry about creeping around outside, but sometimes I get carried away. I noticed. Well, I, it's just that I wanted to see where Billy Clavin, I mean Mark Stratton, lives. Really? Why is that? Because the people on Mile High live such interesting lives. I mean, the characters and the actors, too. What about yours? Oh, my life isn't so uninteresting. It's just, I have a wonderful family, and, and my sister has these two great kids that are like my own in a lot of ways. I, I look after them. I, I, I make clothes for them. Sometimes I forget that they're not my own kids. So when they go on vacation, I'm sort of at loose ends. I know what you mean. I used to get too wrapped up in my work. you you got to take time for yourself. Exactly, which is why I wanted to take this fantasy vacation, you know, see my favorite show in person, meet the stars. But then they didn't have tickets. Look, I, I know this sounds really ridiculous, but this is the first vacation that I've had since Ben died. He was my husband. It's been three years. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm okay. I just needed an adventure, that's all. Are you a policeman? No, I'm an attorney. I work with Perry Mason. Chris Buckner's attorney? Well, I think it is terrible what is happening with her. What do you think that man was looking for? Whatever it is, I think we stopped him before he found it. Hey. What? to a locker at the bus station. Is that a clue? Maybe. Okay, then let's go. This is a murder investigation. I can't let you get involved. But you don't know what the guy looks like who hit you, and I do, so let me help until we spot him. Okay, but you do what I tell you, and you stay out of the way. Can I drive? No. Mason, how nice to see you. It's tragic about Chris. Is there anything I can do to help? Perhaps you can clarify a few things. Well, we're brothers before the bar, so to speak. I, um, I imagine you've been in quite a few judges' chambers in your time. None quite like this one. That's the magic of television. All illusion. You ever watch our show? Oh. My schedule doesn't permit it, but my associate, Miss Street, is a great fan. Really? What does she think of me? I, I mean, as a legal professional, does she think I'm credible? I'll be sure to ask her. She did tell me that you used to be quite a leading man at the beginning of your career. Yeah, there are some people who think I could have been the next Jeff Chandler. Something went wrong? I, um, I prefer television. The, um, the part's more substantial. So you've been active in television all these years. Well, an actor's never as busy as he'd like to be, but I, I can't complain. I'm very relieved to hear that. You are? I'm glad to hear those rumors about your drinking problem were untrue. Rumors? Rumors that you once shut down production while you slept off your drinking problem in a jail? Well... I found it hard to believe that you were unable to continue working and had to be replaced. <sighs> Mr. Mason, let me be frank. It was true, but that was a long time ago. You must have been under a great deal of pressure. Tremendous. People in this business never forget when you cost them money. So, until your wife used her influence to get you this role of Judge Henry things were difficult for you. Well, I got an opportunity to prove myself here, and I have. Mr. Straub, did Mark Stratton ever suggest that your character be dropped from this show? He might have. I wouldn't put it past him. Oh, my God. Does somebody think that I killed him? It would help if you could prove where you were the night someone tampered with Stratton's allergy kit. At home. All night? Ask my wife. Ask Sandra. <laughs> I will. I will. 
just get rid of these and bring me something I can wear. Or I swear to you, you will be chucking hemlines at the dry cleaners by Friday. You understand me? Yes, ma'am. I'll take care of it right away. Mr. Mason? Oh, of course. You're representing Chris. I'm so sorry. Why don't you sit down, please? Thank you. You know, I was once married to an attorney. Did he practice here? The producers killed him off. <laughs> but I do admire attorneys. Your lives are so dramatic. Not as dramatic as yours. Uh, you are a sweet man. You know, I do hope Chris is holding up. Well, that's very kind of you. Since you were close to Mark Stratton. Well, his type come and go. I mean, the honey tan boys of the moment. No, I barely knew him. Really? Really? I heard you promoted him for a starring role in a movie of the week. Oh, that. Now, don't be modest. Didn't you tell the network that if they didn't cast Stratton in that TV movie, you'd walk off mile high? No, I'd say that was very supportive of you. Well, Mark Stratton did have talent. I mean, he could be very charming. But ungrateful. How's that? Well, he betrayed you. No, I wouldn't exactly call it a betrayal. You are being kind. It's common knowledge that after you helped get him the part, he had another actress cast in your role. A, um younger actress Mark Stratton did play me for a fool and everybody knew it everybody but me of course in fact the entire time I was totally unaware that people were whispering behind my back it would make anyone angry well he was a scheming ungrateful little coward no one could blame you for hating him Oh, and I did. I... <sighs> Come on, Mr. Mason. I did not kill Mark Stratton. I mean, surely Alex told you. He told me that you were together at home that night. Together at home all night. That's what he told me. Just give us the pictures. What pictures? Be that way. Pictures you have in the briefcase that you stole from your partner. Put the stick of an attorney. Yeah, my ex-wife had an attorney.
Hey, you know you're going to have to pay the bus company to replace that lock. Huh? Okay, how much? About 20 bucks to cover it. Here, thanks a lot. This is the men's room, isn't it? The guys who snatched the briefcase, where'd they take it? They gave it to the guy we saw at Mark Stratton's house. Then he took a bus. Well, what bus? Where'd he take it? I, I don't know. I oh, was... great. No! No! No, I do not want to write him out. Billy Clavin's murder trial is our hottest storyline right now. Network, just be a minute. So he's dead. We can work with it. Plastic surgery. Get it? We keep our new guy wrapped in bandages a couple of weeks. By the time the rags come off, nobody will even remember what Stratton looked like. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Uh, you work for Perry Mason, right? Della Street. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, no problem. It must be very difficult being a producer of a daily TV drama. After 15 years, I owner my antacid by the case. <laughs> so, about Chris. You think Mason can get her off? Oh, she's innocent. Mr. Mason is planning on proving that. Whatever it takes. How can I help? Well, we'd like a tape of Mark Stratton's last scene. A killer kiss? Mm-hmm. You got it. Thank you. Ellen, tell Post we need a cassette of Monday's work print for Mr. Mason. You can sign for it on your way out. Sign for it? Oh, well, security. Studio's got problems with pirates stealing show tapes before we air them. Must be very expensive for the studio. You have no idea. Uh, anything else you want, you let me know, all right? We need Chris back here. She's terrific. If she's terrific, why did you cut her part? Look, I don't have time to explain the business to you right now. So if you'll excuse me. Thank you, Mr. King. Mm. Uh, Ellen, give me bill and casting. Yeah, yes, I did. I tried to talk to him about the case, but he cut me dead. Jones there with you? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, stand by in King's reception room. Right. This is Perry Mason. I'm sure he's busy. Tell him it's about the network not renewing his contract. Of course I'll wait. Just what is this about my contract, Mr. Mason? A few questions first. If you needed Chris on the show, why did you cut her part? That was Mark's idea. But you went along. Well, you don't argue with the kind of demographics Mark had, not if you want a hit show. But now that he's gone, you need Chris. Cold hard fact. Losing Mark cost the show momentum. But it saved you quite a lot of trouble, didn't it? What trouble? Is it true he was pressuring the network to drop you when your contract came up? And that he wanted to take over the show completely? I don't think I like what you're suggesting, Mr. Mason. No, you don't have to. Where were you the night someone tampered with the allergy kits? The night the police said somebody poisoned the allergy kit, I was at a network meeting in L.A., and I didn't get back till the next morning at 7. You can check it out. I will. Now, would you please go to your office door and tell Miss Street we've concluded our conversation? Sure. Thank you very much. I've told Mr. Mason everything he required. Oh, good, good. Uh, I'd like for you to meet Miss Jones. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not interviewing actresses just now. Miss Jones is a process server, and uh, that is your subpoena for court tomorrow. <laughs> Have a nice day. I 
I get a couple hundred people through here every hour buying tickets for all over the place. But he was just here ten minutes ago. This guy you're looking for, uh, what does he look like? Six one, sandy hair, mustache, carrying a metal briefcase. Uh, kind of big guy, uh, wearing a light striped western shirt. That's the guy! Yeah, uh, bought a one-way ticket to Cedar Grove, bus 52, left about 18 minutes ago. We catch him in my car. Thank you so much. What do you want? Ah, swell. One more question, Cruz. Uh, were there any other cars on the lot that night? I don't know. I didn't look. I wasn't expecting to be arrested for murder. Thank you, Dylan. Chris, we go to court in the morning. How do you feel? I don't know, Perry. Now, look. You've always been a fighter. So fight now. This time, you'll have Della and me fighting right beside you. Thanks. Okay, you get some rest. Good idea, Counselor. I'll take Chris back to her hotel. There she is! My God, Charlotte. She killed my fiance. I loved him, and she killed him. Perry. Mesh Buckner, Mike Winter, Mountain States Entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, my client has no comment. If you want the whole truth, come to court tomorrow. Now, this is a private office. The outer door is there. A little faster, please. Miss Grant, may I have a word with you? Della, where's the Grant file? Uh, oh, it's uh, on the desk right there. Please take Chris into Ken's office. When we leave, we'll take the back elevator. Fine. Come on, Chris. That woman ruined my life. That was a very good performance. Now I have just one question. You can answer it here or in court. What? How did Fitzpatrick feel about your engagement to Mark Stratton? Who? Bill Fitzpatrick is a doctor in Los Angeles. I don't know him. This is a hotel receipt. You and Fitzpatrick spent a weekend together in Las Vegas two months ago. I don't remember. That's odd. That's very odd. I've always heard a bride never forgets her wedding day. Now, you were married to another man when Stratton announced his engagement to you. Must have been very awkward. You think I killed him because he wanted to marry me? Please. You now had the female lead in the show. If Stratton found out you'd been using him, he could have finished your career. I didn't kill him. Where were you the night Stratton's allergy kit was tampered with? With Dr. Fitzpatrick. He had come into town for a couple of days. Did anyone see you? No. I saw two and no one did. How did you get him to agree to keep your marriage quiet? I convinced him it was better for my career if our audience and the fan mags thought I was available. What does he think now? Ah, oh, Mr. Mason. There's no business like show business. <laughs> Miss Grant, if I could just have one more moment, please. Is now Mark Stratton was your fiancé, is that right? Yes. I'm just devastated by all of this. I just can't believe it. Whoever he is, he's halfway to Cedar Grove by now. With the briefcase from Stratton's bus lock. I don't get it. What does this guy have to do with any of our other suspects? 
Cedar Grove. Why does that sound so familiar? That's where Mark Stratton grew up. That's right. I read it in Soap Season Digest. Soap Season Digest? I uh, read it in the dentist's office. <clears throat> the May issue. Mark grew up poor in a small town, but he never gave up his dream of stardom. Cedar Grove, see? Okay, Ken. Next stop, Cedar Grove. When do we leave? We don't leave. I leave. You go home. Mr. Mason, I was outside the studio the night before it happened. I was on the set when he died. I, I was even at his house. Perry, I got a long drive. The man who was at the house who took the briefcase, Ken, doesn't know what he looks like. But you do. Great. Miss Furman, you said you were outside the studio the night before Mark Stratton was killed. Yeah. Did you see anyone from the cast or crew enter the building other than Chris? No, just Chris. Were you there all night? Uh, not all night. I had to move my car a couple of times when the police drove past. Did, did you see anyone else enter or leave the building? Uh, uh, there was a delivery truck. It pulled up to the gate just when I had to move my car. Delivery truck? What kind? Um, it was a, a film lab, a uh, central something. Um, um, I, I, I just got a quick look before I had to move my car. Is it important? I don't know. Be careful, both of you. Thank Bye, you. Perry. Bye, Dylan. Bye, Ken. Suspects. I checked on all their alibis. <laughs> Lieutenant Brock, this container holds the theatrical lipstick Charlotte Grant wore in the scene we just saw. Testimony from forensics has established that it was spiked with walnut oil, and we know from the medical examiner that Mark Stratton was severely allergic to walnuts. Other than Charlotte Grant's fingerprints, can you tell us whose fingerprints were found on this container? The defendant's Chris Buckner. We already have been told by the medical examiner that the fatal dose of walnut oil was in an injection given by the victim to himself. Lieutenant, I now show you an allergy kit, serial number 39021, manufactured by Andrews Pharmaceutical, and ask if you can identify it. Yes, this is a kit that was found next to the decedent's body by the medical examiner and subsequently sent to the forensics laboratory. And what have you learned from their examination? According to specifications, the injector was to contain 0.3 cc's of epinephrine. Instead, it contained pure walnut oil. Someone emptied the injector of epinephrine mm -hmm. and replaced it with the deadly walnut oil, didn't they? Uh, that uh, is exactly what happened. Lieutenant, I now show you a second Andrews Pharmaceutical Allergy Kit, serial number 39078, and ask if you can identify it. Yes, I personally located this kit, and as you can see, it has my mark on it. And where did you find it? In the defendant's dressing room on a shelf in her closet. Thank you, Lieutenant. I have no further questions. Defense has no questions. to live around here. Mark Stratton. Folks owned a place out the West Road. He's still there? Died five years back. What kind of guy was Stratton? No worse than some. Have a lot of friends? None I ever noticed. Any enemies? What you want to do... You want to go down Main Street about two blocks. What will I find there? Sheriff's office. You got any more questions, you ask the sheriff. That's 20 even. Thanks.
any luck? Not much. So what are we going to do? Check in with the local law, ask around, see if anyone's seen a husky guy in a striped shirt carrying a metal briefcase. Oh, my God. What? It's him. Sheriff's office down Main Street. Get me there. Did anyone, other than Chris Buckner, enter the studio that night, Mr. Aberdeen? Uh, no, sir. You're certain? Well, there's only one gate open, and I'm on duty all night. I'd know if anyone went in or out. So, only the defendant, Miss Buckner, had the opportunity to switch those allergy kits, knowing full well that when Mark Stratton used one, it would kill him. I have no more questions of this witness, Your Honor. We've no questions at this time, Your Honor, but we reserve the right to recall this witness for the defense. Witness may step down. Anything further, Mr. Markham? The state rests, Your Honor. Fine. This court will recess until 2.30. Uh, will the defense be ready to call its first witness, Mr. Mason? Defense will be ready, Your Honor. This court is in recess. Now we have something we can use to fight. Jack. Whether the object stolen is a book, painting, episode of your favorite soap opera, something that's taken, and a victim suffers a loss. Is there much of a market for stolen soap operas? An entire week's episode, which haven't been seen in the States, can net the seller $30,000. It's a rich market. Rich market indeed. Thank you very much, Mr. King. No further questions. Mr. Markham? No questions, Your Honor. Witness is excused. Your Honor, I have here an illegal video cassette confiscated from Denver Central Video by the FBI earlier this morning. Agent Holsom of the FBI is present in court to so testify. Your Honor, Mr. Mason discussed this tape with me earlier this morning. The illegality and confiscation of the tape, as just stated by Mr. Mason, have been stipulated, but the state reserves its relevancy objections. Bailiff, please mark the tape Defense Exhibit K for identification purposes. Thank you, Your Honor. Defense would like to call Mr. Mort Aberdeen as its next witness. Mr. Aberdeen. Do you remember when we talked at the studio, I asked you if the clock you used to keep your security log was accurate and you showed me your watch? Yeah, I uh, told you it was the right time. And it was. Uh, what's to make of that watch? Uh, it's a Moritz. Expensive, aren't they? I don't know. It was a gift. <laughs> Where do you get a fine watch like that repaired? Uh, Lord's Jewelers. In fact, they are the only jeweler in town who specializes in that brand. I guess. Uh, when I inquired about your watch, Mr. Lord said you bought it there. Is that true? 
Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I forgot. Sorry. Well, that's quite a timepiece for a man earning a security guard salary. How could you afford it? Well, it, it wasn't easy. Those are uh, your bank records subpoenaed by my office. What? I have uh, copies here. According to these records, you've deposited several thousands of dollars in cash to your account since the first of the year. Where did all that money come from? Well, I, I got lucky at the track. I call your attention to the man sitting beside Agent Holsom. Would the gentleman please stand? Now, you recognize David Taylor, the owner of Denver Central Video, don't you? No, I don't know him. Mr. Taylor has agreed to testify he paid you $30,000 over the last six months to let him duplicate unaired videos from your studio after hours. Also, that you let him onto the studio lot in his delivery truck and that you used your master key to unlock the studio production office. Well, he's lying. And that he did the rest, copying unaired episodes of Mile High, later translating them into Spanish for sale in South America. It's his word against mine. In fact, David Taylor will testify that two of you broke into the prosecution office the night before Mark Stratton died. You can't prove that. Oh, but I can. Your Honor... Te lo juro, no maté a viejo, pero nadie me cree, ni tú. Quiero creerte, Billy, pero ¿por qué no me dices dónde estabas esta noche? ¿Por qué no puedo? That scene was taped the day before Mark Stratton died. The only way Taylor could have made a copy was at the studio that night. You were away from your post, weren't you? Your Honor, anyone could have come into the studio while you were gone. Anyone could have gone to Mark Stratton's dressing room and planted the deadly allergy kit. Anyone could have framed my client for murder because you weren't there to see them, were you, Mr. Aberdeen? No more questions, Your Honor. You again. Ugh. Why'd you hit me? Why do you think? Oh, you should have hit the other guy. Where is he? He's here. I need to make a phone call. Sheriff says I can wait. I'm an attorney working on a murder trial. Sheriff drug. says that you're a druggie. Sheriff Watson says you're more dangerous than you look. What? Who's Sheriff Watson? Hi. Hey. Hey. Hey! I want to make a phone call. You don't need a phone call. Well, you can't hold me like this without a charge. You got a charge. Assaulting an officer to love. Me. I know you were searching in Mark Stratton's house. I know you paid those thugs to mug me for his briefcase. You know that, do you? Whatever you're up to, you're not going to get away with it. That's your legal opinion? Yeah. Well, I'm the law here, son. It's the only legal opinion that counts hereabouts is mine. Well, you can't hold me forever. You know, the thing about these old jail cells is they ain't too secure. Prisoners sometimes try to escape when the deputy goes off duty and the sheriff's all alone. And when that happens, especially if the prisoner's a dangerous man who goes around assaulting officers of the law, the prisoners get killed. You're not serious. Get some sleep, son.
You and your wife were at home the night before Mark Stratton's murder. All night. Mr. Straub, do you ever visit the Cregan service station two blocks from Mile High Studio? Only if I need gas. Did you need gas on Monday, October 11th? No. I have here a receipt from Cregan service station. It shows your gas card was used to pump gas on October 11th. I filled up there earlier in the day. Mr. Cregan's prepared to testify he saw your car at one of his pumps at 8.30 the night before the murder. He recognized your car, a 64 Jaguar, because he'd done some work on it a few weeks ago. He made a mistake. He didn't get a look at the driver because those pumps are activated automatically by credit card. I was home. No. You were on your way to Mile High Studio, weren't you? No. Mort Aberdeen, the guard, didn't see you because he was busy stealing videotapes. You're wrong. Mr. Straub, weren't you at the studio the night someone tampered with Mark Stratton's allergy kit? No. I remind you the penalty for perjury is severe. Would you like me to show you a security videotape that places you at the studio that night? Look at me, Mr. Straub. Look at me. Now, what were you doing at the studio? I did it. I'm the one you want. I took the car. I changed the kit. I killed him. Bailiff, make that woman sit down now or I will clear the courtroom. Mr. Straub, your wife thinks you killed Mark Stratton. She's offering herself to save you. Are you going to let her lie for you? Isn't there something you want to tell us? Defense has no more questions of this witness. Your Honor, the prosecution has no cross-examination and moves to strike this entire testimony. Mr. Mason is engaged in theatrics, whose only purpose is to confuse the issue. Your Honor, the next witness should clear up the prosecution's confusion. Very well. Proceed. I call Mimi Hoyle. Mr. Mason? Right away. The deputy's due to go off duty any time now, and then Watson's coming back here. He's trying to spook me into making a run for it so he can shoot me. Oh, my God. What'll we do? I'm thinking about it. Excuse me, sir. Can I change for a dollar? I only have two quarters. Okay, I'll trade you my dollar for your two quarters. <laughs> I need those for my cash customers. Look, I am desperate. You don't know what desperate is until you only got two quarters. At least you got a dollar. Ah, I have one. You must be living right. Uh. Hello, Mr. Mason, please. I know he's not in, but I have to speak to him. Is this his exchange? Okay, well, you've got to get word to him. No, 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 don't put me on hold. I only have one quarter. No, no, no. No, I don't have any more... Don't cut me off! That phone isn't working. It ain't my quarter, which makes you responsible, so give me a quarter. There's nothing wrong with that phone. Prove it. Here, see? Now, just take Mason, please. And don't put me on hold. 
The night you're talking about, I was at a country western bar. The Appaloosa. You told me you were a regular there every Monday night. That's right. But on that particular Monday night, Miss Hoyle, the Appaloosa was closed due to a power failure. But you would have known that had you been there. Will you identify this for the court, Miss Hoyle? It looks like a blow-up of one of the crew time cards we use at the studio. In fact, it's your time card. It indicates you clocked in on the morning of October 11th, but never clocked out. I forgot. Did you also forget to clock in again the next morning, October 12th? I forgot. The time clock is in the guard shack at the front gate. Every crew member entering and exiting the studio has to clock in. Oh, isn't that so? Yes. The only way you could have managed not to clock in on the day of the murder is if you stayed at the studio overnight. Were you at the studio alone that night, Miss Hoyle? Or was someone with you? I was with a friend. Why couldn't you have met this friend somewhere else? Because he was afraid someone would recognize him. Your friend was Alex Straub? Yes. You and Alex Straub were lovers? Yes. Damn you. I was ready to lie for you. You always have to be the star. You weasel. I am the star. Oh. Bailiff, remove those two people from the courtroom. Don't touch me. Mr. Mason, do you have any more questions for this witness? Just a few, Your Honor. Where were you after the cast and crew left the studio at 7 p.m.? In Mark Stratton's dressing room. He had the only full-size bed. When did Alex arrive? After Mort finished his rounds, I called Alex and I asked him to meet me at the studio. He arrived at about 8.30. You were in Mark Stratton's dressing room all night? Yeah. When did you leave? About 7.30 the next morning. That's when Alex had to be in makeup. And during the time you were in his dressing room from 7 that night until 7.30 the next morning... Did you see Miss Buckner enter and tamper with these kits? No. Defense has no more questions of this witness, Your Honor. Miss Hoyle, you were in Mark Stratton's dressing room until 7.30 a.m. on the morning of the murder. How many times do I have to say this? Yes. But according to this cast sign-in sheet, Mark Stratton arrived at 7 a.m. that morning. Mark always arrived after 8, and I always marked a sign-in sheet an hour earlier. Otherwise, the production office gave him grief. I see. And according to this same sign-in sheet, what time did the defendant, Miss Buckner, arrive? 7.42. In other words, you and Mr. Straub left the victim's dressing room around 7.30. Mark Stratton didn't arrive until after 8. But the defendant... Miss Buckner was present in the studio at 7.42 a.m. Yes. So Chris Buckner would have been able to come into Mark Stratton's dressing room and switch the kits after you had gone without your knowing a thing about it. Your Honor, I need to ask for an immediate recess. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Mason. I'm not through here. No minute, Mr. Markham. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but I need to leave court immediately very unusual request, Mr. Mason, but with your obvious concern, I'm inclined to grant a recess until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, Mr. Markham? Very well, Your Honor. I made my point here. Uh, Mr. Mason?
Are you the sheriff? Uh, no, ma'am. Well, I'm a couple of kids are breaking into a car down the street. I think somebody better stop them. Damn. Sheriff! Sounds like the Gleason boys are acting up again. I'll be back in a minute. Help you, ma'am. I was just telling your deputy that... You're I... not from around here, are you? Who are you visiting? My cousin, Fred. Fred who? Uh, Sheriff. Is somebody hurt in there? You stay here. Oh, that old gag. You must think I'm stupid. <laughs> Killer. Deputy, I'm an attorney working on a murder case. Shut up! You're shooter sure Frank. involved. If you don't believe me, I've got something you ought to read. Frank, shoot! Call the state police. Call anybody you want. Just look at this first. You idiot! Shoot him! Don't you move, Jim. I swear I'll shoot you dead. Put it down. Down! Surprise, surprise. Surprise. Your Honor, defense recalls Mimi Hoyle to the stand. Miss Hoyle, is that Mark Stratton's personalized coffee mug? Uh-huh. It's got his name on it, and I also recognize this crack on the handle. Did you bring Stratton a cup of coffee in that mug the morning he was killed? And did he spill some of it because it was too hot to drink? Yes. Thank you, Miss Hoyle. No further questions? No questions, Your Honor. Defense recalls Evan King. <coughs> Mr. King, as a producer of 15 years' experience, why did you allow a newcomer like Mark Stratton to dictate changes to your show's cast and storyline? Mark had good numbers, the right demographics. He had star quality. No, Mr. King. What Mark Stratton had were those. Now, I have copies here, an article clip from the Cedar Grove News dated 28 years ago. You lived in Cedar Grove 28 years ago, did you not? No. A wealthy farmer's son named Tim Bonner. Bonner was a college student and the older brother of Frank Bonner, the current deputy sheriff of Cedar Grove. Isn't it true that Tim Bonner was killed and his kidnappers never identified? I wouldn't know anything about that. Really? Two of the victim's classmates claimed to have witnessed the kidnapping and gave statements. Uh, would you read the names of those two witnesses? and see if that refreshes your recollection. Jim Watson, Evan King. Watson went on to become sheriff of Cedar Grove. You became a successful television producer. You and Watson lied about the kidnapping. No. Perhaps hearing this tape recorded by Mr. Stratton will refresh your memory. Hi, Evan. It's Mark Stratton. This is tape one of two. The other's safely locked away. Now, it's a funny thing. Twenty years ago, I was a kid growing up in Cedar Grove. I used to play at the old granary north of town. You remember. 
One day I saw you and Jim Watson take Timmy Bonner to the fields behind the granary. Except Timmy never came back. Only you and Watson came out again and both of you had blood all over you. Tim Bonner was found a week later, dead. I was just a kid then and I didn't put it all together. But when I recognized you at the audition the other day, the pieces began to fit. Hey, look, Evan, I can keep quiet, but I sure could use some help with my career. <laughs> it's like the man said. Uh, this could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Jim Watson was arrested last night. He confessed to the murder of Tim Bonner, and he implicated you. Mark Stratton was blackmailing you, wasn't he? You can't believe that, Mr. Mason. That tape was some kind of a strange joke of Mark's. When you realized Stratton's demands were going to destroy you, you decided to kill him. Your Honor, I'm not on trial here. Mr. King, Charlotte Grant's lipstick was spiked by you. You planted the deadly allergy kit in Stratton's bedroom that morning. You hid the original kit in Chris Buckner's dressing room. In other words, Mr. King, you framed my client. You can't prove that. Any of it. As a matter of fact, I can. It always puzzled me how the killer could be sure Mark would kiss Charlotte while she was wearing that lipstick. The kiss wasn't even in the script. No, it wasn't in any of the scripts taken from the studio set by the police. But it was in Mark Stratton's script. What are you talking about? The script with Stratton's name on it, found by the police on the set after his death, is not the script he was studying the morning he died. The dialogue in it wasn't outlined. Mark Stratton always outlined his dialogue. Now, that is the script you handed Mark Stratton that morning, is it not? Wait a second. The script you prepared especially for him with a scene direction that reads, Billy pulls her into a hot embrace and kisses her. You can't prove Mark ever saw this script. Really? Not with Mark Stratton's personal mug and the stain it made on the script? There it is, Mr. King. All we need, Mr. King, all we need is the truth. He was going to take it all. I couldn't let him do that. The show it was everything. Years I've been doing this. I don't know anything else. I couldn't let him take it all away. Your Honor, defense moves for a dismissal of all charges against Chris Buckner. People have no objection, Your Honor. This case is dismissed. Bailiff, take this man into custody. This case is resolved, and the court has no further objections to photographs by the press. You were great as always. Just one question. Mm -hmm. Where do you find time to watch soap operas? I found it the same place Marshall found it. Justice Marshall wasn't working for me. You're not that demanding. Oh, you want to bet? What the hell? I want to see how they do it in Hollywood. Sure. Sure. Chris! Smile. Smile.